Okay, so today it's going to be Ron DeSantis, uh, Governor of Florida and possible uh, presidential candidate, uh, Donald Trump, and Jack Smith, uh, Department of Justice Special Counsel, looking for a way to prosecute, prosecute Trump, I guess. Um, hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, Ron DeSantis, he's become like the mini uh, southern version of Trump. He's from my hometown, Jacksonville, Florida. And um, it's just such a, an unusual thing when you watch the two video, uh, videos of the two of them side by side. He just absolutely has taken on Trump's uh, persona as, a, as an act, I guess. But, so, but what about him and Donald Trump? And then because at the same time, Donald Trump has the problem of the uh, Department of Justice Special, uh, Department of Justice, <laughs> that's hard to say, Special Counsel, uh, Jack Smith, uh, looking into him, interviewing everybody around him, and um, and how does all of that uh, mix up? And oh my God, next year is going to be a mess. Uh. All right, so we've got our topic uh, for today. So Ron DeSantis will be first one off the uh, block, and um, he is the very Republican governor of uh, Florida and uh, looks like he's going to be interested in being president. <laughs> so there's that depressing thing. And um, then we'll talk about Donald Trump uh, just uh, in general to see where is he in his head. I would be so interested to be a fly on the wall uh, in his office or anywhere in his presence really to see how he's reacting to all of this stuff. And, um, and then all of that versus Jack Smith who's got a job to do, and that's it. But uh, before we talk about any of that stuff, let's go ahead and have just a minute of meditation. Okay. So Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida. Um, I guess he's had some problem with uh, critical race theory uh, originally, and then um, advanced uh, public advanced studies uh, for regarding African Americans, and then um, what was the most recent thing that happened with him? Well, he's just in general the obvious uh, nemesis to Donald Trump. All the uh, I guess Nikki Haley said she was going to run. Or is in indicating that as of time I'm filming this, filming this video, um, I think she isn't as important to him as maybe Ron DeSantis. So, so there's that. Let's get um, three cards to start on Ron DeSantis. If it looks like it's going somewhere, we'll do a dyadic cross with three more cards. But uh, three cards. I'm gonna take them right out all together. One, Ron DeSantis, right now in the situation with Donald Trump. Yeah. If I was him, I would just eat all this fuel for my um, campaign. Uh, first card up, Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. We've got the Queen of Cups. Emotion. This woman looks particularly um, uh, fragile, um, susceptible. And uh, so this queen is holding a great big cup of cups. So she's just overtaken with um, emotion about the situation. But if you look carefully at her face, I mean, it could almost be satirical. She could almost be like in the back of her mind saying, yeah, I really don't feel that sorry for you. I've got a plan. So this seemed to me to be kind of Ron DeSantis's attitude towards the situation with Trump. Just lay back and um, wait. Um, the next card then is the Knight of Pentacles. Pentacles being value I don't think we're talking about money here at all. So, and the knight is the guy fighting for that value. So, don't think that this um, quiet demeanor right now, uh, that there's not, uh, don't mistake that for there not being uh, fire in the belly. 
And then the final one is the Wheel of Fortune. That's very interesting. So to finish, finish it up with, yeah, anything can happen. And usually the Wheel of Fortune is turning in a positive direction. And we're, we're talking about Ron DeSantis. That would be in a positive direction for him. So, yeah, this looks um, like he's just waiting. Just waiting for things to be the right time. Oof. And what about Donald Trump right now? So with everything that's going on in his life, what's going on in his life? So he's trying to start that new, uh, his new presidential campaign. He's been on the road. Has to just be a grift for money. Would you think that he's figured out that's the way he makes money now? It was a TV show for a while. That went away. And the, they say that his campaign was originally just uh, to boost his company's uh, public image because TV was beginning, beginning to be over for him. And then they had no idea or intention of winning, but his, his rude, nasty nature just pushed him all the way over the edge. And uh, and that they went, when they actually got <laughs> won the campaign, they were shocked. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to transition. Stuff had to be figured out at the last minute. And uh, people were walking around with their jaws open, they say, in the pre-Trump administration. So what about Trump now? All those people are used to him now. You know, he's just got whatever hangers on or left. So what about Trump? Right now, three cards. So all these trials seem to be bubbling up, but it all seems to be fuel for his persona, really, and his campaign. Uh, the more contra Who said that um, it doesn't matter what you write about me, just spell my name right? Uh, no publicity, all publicity is good. So this is the uh, Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups is walking away from something emotionally important to you. And um, so it's loaded with, with passion, um, and, but what would uh, Trump be walking away from? The next card up is, wow, the end of a cycle, death. I mean, literally, uh, looking forward to, uh, this is almost over, I can see it right now, death over and then the last card and this is a what about Donald Trump right now oh that's interesting and then this is the uh, uh, Emperor as he sees himself well I don't know he's walking away from something of importance to him and I really couldn't tell you what it is except that it's, there is a, a female uh, energy represented you know clearly in the deck and then uh, the clear card that this is the end this cycle is in sight I can see it now okay and this isn't a happy end that you're looking at here this is like you know, a sad uh, end that you're not looking, oh, sad, an end that you're not looking forward to, maybe so. And then the final card with the Emperor is, yeah, I think that's where he, we asked about Donald Trump and he's such a strong energy that, yeah, he, he, this is who he thinks he is. And uh, so this is sad for him. He sees the end coming, but um, that's interesting. Ugh. And then uh, Jack Smith, so that should be a good, let's clear the cards even for him, Jack Smith. Let's see what's the energy we get for just a quick draw. And then I'll do a six car diet across uh, after this to, I don't know, see if we thread the story through all of that. So Jack Smith, just three cards for him. Okay, one, two, Jack Smith. What in the world? What could you imagine is going on for him? I mean, he's just uh, studying legal briefs. Uh, what a fun job. You like reading a novel, but it's all real. Four of Swords, Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And the Four of Swords knowing when to uh, get up because you don't want to get stuck. So, yeah, it's a waiting game. Um, the next one for Jack Smith is, oh, sun shining down on the situation. So, yeah, everything that's coming to light, obviously, is uh, is a challenge. <laughs> that would be certainly a challenge to that kind of a, having to be patient. And then the final card, ah, more secrets to be revealed. So yeah, no, no one to, to wait, uh, shining a light on everything, and uh, even more is coming. So this is where Jack's, Jack Smith's head is right now. So now we'll just do six cards on that whole trio and see if there's, I don't know how they could be related. I don't, I don't get in my head Ron DeSantis uh, connected to Jack Smith, but uh, we'll give it a shot. See if anything comes of it, see what you think about what the cards say, let me know. And this is a cool deck, so you should stay till the end because there's a bunch of extra cards that you don't use in here. You get to make choices. For instance, the lover's card, you can choose it to be a man and a woman, a man and a man, or a woman and a woman. You have those choices in this deck, and so I've just chosen one of those as the lover's card here. And the other ones you keep here, and there's some other cards that you can sw 
uh, I have options, as a matter of fact. 82 cards altogether. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video if you hang around. What am I talking about now? I'm talking about Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, and Jack Smith. Okay. Six cards. Two. Three. Four. Five. I can't imagine how these all three could be. Um, Okay, so signifier card. Uh, Ronnie, Donnie, and Jack. <laughs> Ronnie, Donnie, and Jack. I like that. Signifier card here. Seven of Wands. Interesting. So, Wands are actions, plan, forward movement. And seven of Wands is, you know, having one um, major wand to fend off everything else. It just makes me think this has to be uh, Jack Smith kind of uh, managing all of the issues around whatever he's managing right now. So that's a signifier card when we're talking about Ronnie, Donnie, and Jack. And the challenge to that is, ah, looking at things from another perspective, well, of course it is. You know, he, he is in the very business of having to look at whatever is coming up at him as to whether it's uh, upside down or right side up. And so the uh, base of all of this is the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is victory, but it's, it's, a, it's a hard fought for uh, pre-punished kind of victory uh, that's the base of all of this six of wands with it so lots of actions so we're trying to say Ronnie Donnie and Jack Ronnie Donnie and Jack and right now this seems really heavy Jack uh, for me this is Jack uh, fighting off some of these possibilities here um, having to look at things from every angle victorious at a price interesting and then the um, strength uh, in the past Strength in the past, so maybe that indicates that getting point the beginning of a, a, a beginning, a, a beginning again. There was strength in the past, and then the four pentacles holding on to the value that's there. And I imagine the whole thing is a, a dangerous kind of waiting game. I'm sure there must be some sort of uh, timelines for the evidence that you're looking at or the crimes that's been perhaps committed. Who knows? And then the final uh, outcome for this dyadic cross, um, but it doesn't talk about uh, DeSantis at all. Is this uh, four of wands? Small, well, and here he is. Four of wands. Wands actions, plans, forward movement, and the four of wands are smaller celebrations on towards something bigger. And of course, so this is DeSantis now, governor of Florida, uh, really basking in his popularity, uh, waiting to move on to, I guess, the White House, or at least that race for that White House. Um, I can do four more cards. Uh, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump. I would like to know more about them. Ace of Swords. Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, in their future somehow, is a great big offer of, uh, of that sword. And then that said, uh, in the environment of what? Nine of Wands, a nightmare. A nightmare of actions all around you. So each one of them, Ron DeSantis, can look forward to a victory, uh, even with all the issues that are coming up. And uh, Donald Trump uh, can look forward to a big dose of this, uh, you know, uh, you want to guess that it's good, but it could be truth or justice. And uh, also, you know, amidst, you know, a really hard fought battle. And then the um, hopes and fears for this with the Queen of Pentacles. So, of course, Pentacles, I don't think is money at all in this case. We're talking about you know, value. And this queen is looking sad. I mean, she's holding on to what Pentacles she has right there. So hopes and the fears, the Queen of Pentacles. Um... So you've got what it takes to to make this fight to hang on. Um, you know, it's not endless. And then the final outcome. With the Seven of Pentacles, well, that's understandable, I guess, but not very satisfying. Pentacles, again, money or value, but, you know, it's value. And uh, this uh, Seven of Pentacles, you're always wondering, did I do enough? Is there, is there more I could have done? Could I take a little more right now? Seven of Pentacles is just that uneasy, unknowing, unsettled, uh, unfinished thing at the end of a thing. So that's what it is. Uh, okay, that's the three guys on the headline. I hope you like the video. Uh, let me know what you like me to read on and I'll read. Yeah, I'm going to show you the cards now. Thanks. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box, nice magnetic clasp, good sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist's questions for the cards are actually 82 cards 
here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual cards, shadow cards, and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78. And I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them. I'll explain why, why that is even. So when we start with the booklet, and um, it's a nice... Uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all depictions of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are, uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so a, um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook, uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by a, a fellow seer. Um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the, the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out. But it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon. And I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of cards, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges. And uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color. And it tells you under each of the cards how to use them. And then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here. and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting. But I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I picked here, and it's in this deck somewhere. <laughs> but uh, So this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so, number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards, period, for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So that's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as justice is number eight and strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as strength number eight and justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and, and if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think it's a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. <laughs>